What's going on guys? So recently I played the game The Exorcist. Power press composure, you motherfucker. Come on. If you have not seen it already, click the link above or below. Check that out. It's really good. But in that game, I was like a cop doing an exorcism, like becoming an exorcism. So I figured today might be a good idea to see what really goes in to be an exorcism. And Vice actually had a documentary with the real life exorcism. Exorcist, my bad. I'm mispronouncing things. So without further ado, let's see what it is like to be an exorcist. There is a war that's being waged between good and evil. Faith in God will lead us in one direction. The lack of faith will lead us in another. I have seen many manifestations of evil, and exorcism is the only cure for one who's truly demonically possessed. Catholic Church knows that most of these claims are baloney. They cling to this because they're afraid to give up that last vestige of the supernatural. If there's no demons, then maybe there's no devil. And if there's no devil, maybe there's no God. I'm Father Vincent Lampert. I've been a Catholic priest for the past 25 years. I was appointed by my Archbishop to be the exorcist for Indianapolis. It was not a position that I sought, but in 2005, the Archbishop selected me for the role. Hmm. He told me that he wanted a priest who believed in the reality of evil, but not one who would be so gullible to believe that everybody who came to him was actually up against the forces of evil. When I was appointed, I became one of only 12 officially appointed exorcists in the United States. That number has now grown to around 50. Wow, only 50, like one estate. Some people will dabble in the things of the occult, believing that perhaps they're just fun and entertaining, but what they may not fully realize is that they're dabbling with evil and they could be opening up an entry point for evil into their lives. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Communion. Communion. I'm the pastor here at St. Malachy Parish in Brownsburg, Indiana. The, the parish has approximately 2,500 families, or just around 9,000 parishioners. There are many people who laugh at the notion of demonic possession or even the reality itself. But the Catholic Church does teach that evil is a reality I and it is personified the way out. in the person of the devil. So over the years, exorcism has undergone many different transformations. Exorcism goes back even before the time of Christ. But exorcisms became truly efficacious or real with the coming of Christ. The oldest formalized version of the rite of exorcism would date back to 1614. It was revised in 1999. Mm. Some of the manifestations I've witnessed over the years seem kind of uh, incredible, incredulous. I think the manifestations that one sees in movies, such as The Exorcist, all that truly is possible. Eyes rolling in the back of the head, foaming at the mouth, growling and snarling that like a wild still animal. Me out. And I am like strong stench. Uh, the temperature in the room will drop. Bodily so, contortions. I remember this not a person who began to levitate like right during the exorcism. Now these manifestations are meant to distract the exorcist. 
And I learned quickly that the exorcist should not focus on the manifestations of evil, but focus on the power of God that is at work. There's an international association of exorcists, which received official Vatican approval just about two years ago. I am a member of that organization, and there's a gathering in Rome every other year. Demonic possession is extremely rare. One out of every 5,000 people who contact me is a genuine case of demonic possession. Hello, Mary, how are you? Obviously, this is a ministry that I cannot do alone. So there's a lady that works with me, and I jokingly like to refer to her as my ex or assistant. Uh, She's really the first line of defense. The majority of people that she talks to just need a listening ear. Exorcist. Yeah. Well, I've got a revolving list right now of some people that are local because they would be in our diocese. I have that one guy from southern Indiana that keeps calling me. And I don't think he remembers all the times that we've talked because he always acts like no one has ever talked to me or ever tried to help me. No and that's what help. gives credence to the fact that this is truly something of a mental health issue as opposed to something that's demonic. Of course, it doesn't help, too, because I also, you know, I was just talking with another priest. He was telling me that he just doesn't believe any of this, mm-hmm. you know. Some people will accept what the church believes and teaches about the reality of evil. Some people won't. I am Dr. Michael Shermer, publisher of Skeptic Magazine and the head of the 55,000 member strong Skeptic Society. I have two graduate degrees, one in experimental psychology and the other in the history of science. So my specialty really is understanding belief systems, how the mind works, uh, related to why we believe anything that we believe in. The investigation of exorcisms has been uh, popular uh, since we started the magazine, really because it, it kind of comes and goes depending on what's hot in pop culture. You know, the Pew Research shows one in ten. Americans claim that they've seen an exorcism. I suspect most of those are people that have seen The Exorcist or watched a documentary on TV or something like that. You know, if you go on YouTube and just type in demon possession, there's you know, thousands of videos. You could spend an hour and be an expert on what they're supposed to look like. So the church has these, uh, you know, sort of list of criteria for what would constitute a possession. Speaking in tongues, glossolalia, is one of them. Spouting off this sort of sequence of syllables and just, you know, it sounds nonsensical and then somebody interprets it. Now we know because uh, we've had linguists analyze recordings of what is being said. And they say this is not a language. It's just babble. You know, it, it's mm. literally a psychodrama. The music, the chanting, the dancing, the singing, and all that, it gets you caught up into it. It's like a rave. You feel the emotions, you feel the brain chemistry changing, the hormones pumping through your body. Uh, the contorted uh, body postures and the writhing on the ground, the utterances, it's just imitation. Uh, I've actually gone up to one of these, and I can almost feel like, okay, here I go. I can almost feel it coming on. Like, and I wasn't even a believer. This is imitation, it's role playing. In addition to these exorcisms being nonsensical from a scientific perspective, they're also dangerous. There have been people killed, suffocated, tortured. It's not a harmless exercise in entertainment. It's potentially very dangerous. Once you start to believe something, the confirmation bias kicks in, in which you look for confirming evidence that it's true, and you ignore the disconfirming evidence. Everybody does it. Unfortunately, uh, this leads to great distortions of belief. There's no such thing as the paranormal or the supernatural. There's just the normal and the natural and the things we haven't explained yet. This is where I perform my most intense case of exorcism. It took place five years ago here in this convent. This guy's creepier than the actual story thing is. The items I use for exorcism And in addition, in my bag, I also have the holy water that I would use. We came into the space, the spouse who was very strong and confident in his belief, the woman who was afflicted sat down here. You could smell in the air the sense of perspiration. 
just the anxiety of what was about to take place. No sooner did the drops of water hit the head of the lady than the manifestations began immediately. She exhibited vocal outbursts, speaking in languages that she didn't otherwise know, exhibiting strength beyond the normal capacity of a person, and also an aversion to things of a sacred nature. And all this was going on as I was praying. Sancte Michel Archangeli, defendi nos in prelio, contra ne quitiam et in sit Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison. And so I commanded the demon Leviathan to depart immediately. And then the demon that had been speaking in this very strong, authoritative voice began to speak like a little baby and then looked at me and said, Hail Mary, full of grace. And there was a shriek and all the manifestations of evil ended because the presence of evil was now completely gone. Hmm. People will believe what they will. So it's not really my task to try to convince people of something. Because if you're a person of faith, you begin with the premise that believing is seeing. People that may come from more of a scientific background may begin with the premise that I have to see in order to believe. Hmm. So that was quite the interesting video. I took a couple things away from it, but uh, basically most of the other stuff I've already I've already known. Uh, it's still a freaky uh, like a freaky subject to talk about because you just don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this video. Let me know what kind of other videos you want me to do in the future. Hit that subscribe button. I will see you guys next time on our reaction. Have a good night, guys. Live your best life. Be safe. And stay away from evil things. Bye, guys. <laughs>